Badger fans, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Badgers. Just a very quick kind of reaction show where the Badgers are going next. Noah Reynolds, no longer committed to the Badgers. That was uh, very quick. The portal giveth and the portal taketh away. Let's talk about why I think it might have happened and where should Gray Guard pivot next on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Just a quick show, reaction show. I I just find this very interesting, so I wanted to kind of quickly talk about it. I'm going to be traveling tomorrow anyway, so I already have a show recorded. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to talk to about it much tomorrow. So I figured let's get something out there. Let's talk about it. Let's chop it up. Noah Reynolds, the former Wyoming guard that committed to the Badgers. Hey, I'm going to come here. I'm going to play. Great guard really wanted me. Uh, like six days later, he's like, mm, nah, I'm going to reopen that commitment. Uh, I talked. He, he had a, a statement on Twitter, Noah Reynolds, that said, essentially, after talking to friends and family, I've decided to reopen my commitment. Thanks to great guard. Uh, a couple things I want to touch on here. And I think what happened, my, my initial gut, and I have no insight into this one. I didn't hear anything specifically. Uh, and Due North, Badger715, jumping in the chat. Uh, this is where I went to, Due North. Uh, so you and I are thinking alike. Due North says, I think he realized he was going to be after Klesman and Yalden. He didn't come for eight, eighth man minutes. So that was kind of where I went first, right, is he committed. And he might have either been told, possibly, or he might have just been under the assumption that the Badgers are done collecting guards slash wings, right? And then they landed A.J. Storr, who is definitely a wing, who's definitely going to take some of those ball handling duties, who's definitely going to be a shooter and be a starter. And now suddenly he went from being maybe the the uh, top ball handler off the bench because uh, Storr's coming in. Storr's going to push Klesman to the bench. Now you're an eighth man, right? Um, and I love that, by the way. I loved him as an eighth man. That That's really good depth for Wisconsin. But I'm I'm guessing – what happened is he he didn't think a guy like AJ Store was coming. And I don't know if he didn't think that because guard didn't tell him that or if guard said we're still going to compete for more players and Reynolds wanted to lock in a spot somewhere. That and That's what it feels like to me. It feels like – because it happened so quickly after Store committed. It feels like he looked at the roster, Store's coming in, and he's like, I don't want to be an eight or ninth man. Because what are you getting, 10 minutes a game at that point? Um, Adam Berger says didn't want to compete with Store. And it wouldn't even been a competition with Store, right? That's the thing. Store's coming in to start. He's coming in to play a lot of minutes. Um, so he would have been competing with Kamari McGee off the bench. I mean, he. So that's what it feels like to me. Um, he does have an assistant who's a brother, I think, and I think Do North is saying this. Who's now going to coach at UW Green Bay? So maybe there's a connection there. But again, to me, it just feels like he thought that. You know, he, he thought that he was going to have more opportunity here. And credit to great guard. Like, this is what we've talked about. Don't – this is what Phil Longo did, right? This is what got us so excited about football, right? Let, let's be super clear here. When Phil Longo came in and Luke Fickle came in and they landed Nick Evers, we our heads exploded, right? Four-star quarterback from Oklahoma. We are set. And then he landed Mordecai and Braden Locke and the, the 24 kid in Met Tower, right? He didn't stop there. He kept adding to the cupboard. And kudos to great guard continuing to add to the cupboard. And if that ticks somebody off, good, right? Like that's, that's what you want. You want more bodies coming in where the players, I don't want to say lesser players, but players without that pedigree are like, I can't compete for a spot here. I have to go somewhere else. That's a good thing. That's a healthy churn in the portal era. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, not a good thing that he left. I think it's a good thing that guard continued to add to the roster. Now I want to be super clear because I'm not one of those dudes who's going to trash a player who leaves, right? That's not where I'm at. Because I liked I liked Reynolds. I'm not going to go back and say I didn't like Reynolds. I liked him coming in. When he committed, I, I said, hey, this is a single. Like, Greyguard hit a single with, with Noah Reynolds, which means it's a good, solid player. And it can't be the home run of the offseason. That's basically exactly what I said. And it wasn't because then he went and landed AJ Store. But I still like the guy who hit singles. Like, Noah Reynolds would have been solid depth off the bench. He had some things that we we lack on the team, the ability to finish in the paint, you know, a little bit of a taller ball handler, playmaker, whereas McGee and, and Hepburn are a little smaller. So I'm, I am bummed that he's leaving. I'm not trying to minimize it or say, ah, I don't care anymore because we got stored. No, I, like 
he was a big part of the depth that I was lauding for the team. And now, you know, Gilmore, it, it, we, we need another player. So let's let's continue talking about that here and where we want to pivot to. Rick, Rick Tange says the same thing. I'm guessing uh, lots of playing time to store. Um, I believe we have more of a need for a stretch big anyway. Hard, excuse me, hard to know if Gus is going to be ready to play next year. Love his potential. Gus is going to be ready to play next year, uh, Rick. That uh, My opinion, but that's an opinion shared by people who are smarter than me who I've talked to. Uh, he's going to be ready to play next year. But that being said, I, I still do think you need depth in the front court. You, you, def, you could definitely use another guy. So I agree with you there. Um, v. Valterra says, you know, do you think we'll get another player? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I think this team still has a need for a, a playmaker off the bench, right, to go along with Cosman. And they, they need more front court depth because even if you think Gus is playing next year, and I do, um, that still gives you, what, two big men that you think you can count on? That's not enough. You know, players get hurt. Players get in foul trouble. Let's say um, Crowell turns an ankle and he misses four games. What are you doing in that situation? Uh, is is Gus a starter at that point? Probably. But then you have no backup and you're relying on a true freshman to start and play 30 minutes a game. So, yeah, I think they're getting another player. I, I think a, a four or five with experience and some girth is it, it would be an incredible get. I think it's really necessary for the roster composition. So I think that's where they want to go. Um, but I could see them still pursuing another secondary playmaker off the bench if – they don't think McGee is going to be able to be that backup point guard next year. Because I don't know if they want Klesman in that role. I think they want Klesman as kind of a combo guard coming in where he can play the one, the two, or the three. I think they could use another uh, point guard who can initiate the offense. That's kind of what Reynolds was to some degree for this roster. So potentially, I think if you shift some scholarships around, maybe another player transfers out even, which is not. That could still happen. I think you have room on the, the bench for another playmaker and a big. Christian Grass says, uh, frees up space for a center, hopefully. Yeah, they, that's the biggest roster need by far. That is the biggest roster need by far. You ha It is so thin in the front court because I don't know if Lo Nolan Winter can play right away. Um, potentially, if you needed him, he could. He's pretty skinny. Now, if you shoot the ball and you space it and you move pretty well, you know maybe you can play some of the four. Not every team has a gigantic center that would punish Nolan Winter, so – Maybe situationally plays, but you you got to get another big. I think that's a big deal. Texas Badger says no loss. Let's get a big athletic five. Yeah, the problem is big athletic fives aren't coming in to be a backup, and we're not recruiting somebody to, to start over Crowell right now. Now I think we need a five, but I don't think you're going to find a big athletic five that's coming in. Uh, I, I maybe I'm wrong. I, I would just love. I guess this is a low bar, but give me another vote type who is, who is big and a pretty good rim protector. I would slightly disagree with the no loss Texas Badger. That's only my opinion, though. I think Noah, Noah Reynolds was, to me, a good solid bench piece. And on a team that hasn't had a, much of a bench for two years, I was excited about that. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, Christian uh, Gross says, good point. Stack that talent and embrace competition 100%. If, if there is nothing else – that then Fickle and Longo have done on the offensive side. It's stack talent, receivers, quarterbacks. Like you have to stack talent on this roster, and there's been too much flotsam, quite frankly, on the bench the last couple of years. You have to have more talent. And then what happens is naturally, especially with the portal, talent weeds itself out, right? Um, the players that aren't competing and aren't necessarily contributing to the, the success of the team, they go somewhere else where a better opportunity awaits for them and that opens up more room for you to bring in more talent it's this self-perpetuating wheel and it just hasn't worked that way for the wisconsin batters basketball team lately so i think this is a bit of a sign of it you get store in and immediately a guard of a lesser pedigree says um i'm out that's a good sign in a lot of ways ladies and gentlemen so be excited about that portion of it tim says it's gonna be hard to find a quality player who wants to sit behind connor and store for two or three years yeah no i agree that's that's the trick now, Store is interesting, right? Former top 100 recruit, really turned on at the end of the last year, has some shooting, some size, some athletic ability. It's not crazy to project that he might be here for a year or two and then test NBA waters. There's already been some hype from uh, Sports Illustrated. There was a scouting report saying he's a guy that people are projecting for a sophomore breakout. So, listen, if all the dominoes align, he could make a big jump and be become an NBA-type prospect. So maybe he's not here for two or three years, but you never know. Let's keep going here. 
Beach Bomb says rumors there's been contact with Robbie Buren. Maybe he takes a scholarship as a backup. Yeah, that'd be a great pickup. Um, I don't again, I don't know what he wants if he if he's looking for more more of a starting role, but I would I would be all for that one. Uh, Wes Mullenix says, where is Ryan Reynolds going? It's uh, Noah Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is, is probably making another Deadpool movie somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't know where he's going to head, to be honest. I, I just, it's not Madison. So Tim, this is an interesting one. I like this thought, Tim. This is a very NFL draft, baseball draft mentality. Tim says, go get the best player available. Forget, I think he's saying, forget a five, forget a one, forget a two. Just get the best player, stack talent. There's logic there, right? Because especially in college basketball where, listen, I think the roster needs a four or five. I really do. But if you can stack talent on the wings and in the backcourt, if you can get another maybe dynamic player off the bench there, you can go small in college basketball and have a lot of success. I mean, heck, you can do that at the NBA. Like you watch the playoffs, the finals. Um, Teams go small for five, six minutes in a game and you have Kawhi Leonard playing the five or you have Kevin Durant playing the five, right? You have, Giannis, I mean, well, Giannis is his own category. He's a unique freak show. But my point is you can go small in college basketball. So maybe, yeah, just go get the best player. There's a lot of logic there that Tim has. Um, I agree with that. Bo Dragan, uh, the the eternal optimist, said he did a, an AJ store deep dive, scored 20 on UConn, but Sandwich was two games against Marquette where he did nothing. Yeah, it was an inconsistent, it was an inconsistent year. He was also a freshman. Um, and I think if you look at the stretch of games he played, at the end of the year, you're going to find his best basketball, which to me is a good sign. Now, listen, I, I also am not projecting that he's going to be a superstar, an all Big Ten player. I'm just saying he checks a lot of boxes that this team needed. Length, athleticism, shooting, um, and quite frankly, some some type of pedigree that allows him to play in transition more, to score more when things break down. So, yeah, who knows if how, what he's going to do next year. He certainly needs to be more consistent, but you could say that about a ton of freshmen, right? Johnny Davis had to be more consistent. And then look what he did his sophomore year. So I'm, I'm confident that you're going to get a good rotation player at a minimum. And then from there, we'll see where it goes. But you need those, right? You need good rotation players. And you need length and athleticism. And he gives you both of those. Let's keep going here. Um, a bunch more comments. Christopher Gerber agrees. Noah, if the oh, if the reason Noah opened up his recruitment again is because he didn't think he was going to get playing time because we brought in more talent, it's good he's leaving. Need guys that will compete. Yeah, that's a really good take. And I want to, this is nuanced to me because I see, I see a lot of people say, I want people who compete. And if you don't want to compete, get out of here. And and Christopher, I'm not attacking that aspect of your post, but I do want to point out that sometimes it's about business decisions, right? If you can go somewhere else and be guaranteed minutes or stay somewhere and have to fight for them, I can see the business decision saying, I'm just going to go here where I know I can play and put film up. But there's also an element of, if you're not sure you want to be in this locker room, and this is where I agree with you, Christopher. If you're not sure you want to be in this locker room, then it's probably best you leave, right? Because you don't want that to fester. And then three months down the road, this this player or any player is saying, oh, Greg Gard promised me this. I'm not getting my minutes. I'm frustrated. And then you maybe have a locker room problem and the culture is under attack a little bit. So I do agree with the aspect of if you're going to make a move, you're not sure. Yeah, get out. And no, no shots, nothing personal. Like, I, I I hope you do well wherever you go, Noah. But, yeah, if you're not in the locker room for the long haul, you probably don't need to be here for the long haul. Um, but I don't really mind players that go somewhere where they get an easier path to playing time. I think we see that at a lot of levels. We see that at the high school level where, where quarterbacks are transferring to schools, you know, where they get more exposure. And to me, it's just business decisions. So I, I don't mind that as much. Uh, Rick Tange says, need a, a big that can hit the three. We saw how crowded the paint got when Gilmore played backup center. Yeah. Listen, Gilmore, it got so crowded partially because Gilmore couldn't do anything, right? And teams were just playing so far off of him. Crowell, can Crowell hit, Crowell hit threes next year? I don't know. He shot about 31% last year, 30% this year. So not great. Um, I have faith that he can be an okay shooter enough to pull defenses out. We know Tyler Wall's not going to be that guy. So yeah, if you could bring up a backup five, who could be a bit of a pick and pop dude, that would be great. That'd be ideal. That's that's by the way, that's that's Gus Yaldin potentially. That's Nolan Winter potentially. If they if they can make the jump and be ready, you know, there's a couple pick and pop guys for you. Let's keep going. Um a uh, bunch of comments here. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. I just wanted to get something up and talk about it. Let's see. Do North says uh, Bo Dragon eats <laughs> equals Tom Oates. 
<laughs> oh, easy, easy there. Easy there. Um, Bo Dragon says, next year you will say Gar just needs some more athletic players. Probably. I probably will say that. Because, listen, you're not going to fix everything in one offseason either. But getting a Nolan Winter is more athleticism. Getting a Blackwell is more athleticism. And now getting a Storr is more athleticism. So it's a progression, right? You're not going to go from zero to 100 in one year. You have to build it that roster back up a little bit. And I like what he's done this offseason to do that. Okay. Um Mitch Ames says he literally said he liked it because he wasn't promised anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that Greg Gard promised him a starting spot. I'm saying maybe there was an assumption on his part. Maybe there was a, a miscommunication. Maybe he thought – maybe maybe the the communication didn't ha- didn't happen and he just thought we were done in, in the backcourt and on the wings and we were looking for a post player. I, I think it's too coincidental that he decommits right after store to, to not think that they're related. So whether that is – him rethinking it based on the depth chart, whether that's a different opportunity that came up or whether he in his mind was promised slashed um, what he thought earned a, a slice of playing time. I don't know. I do think that there, those, those situations are connected. Nota whale says fickle should recruit for UW basketball. Seriously. Yeah. Listen, uh, fickle that the, the injection of enthusiasm for that football side is incredible. Um, there's no doubt there. He says we need Brady Collins working with the B-ball team. Yeah, like that dude's a monster. Brady Collins is awesome, man. Uh, again, it's, it's that excitement with the football team. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens there. Uh, Tim says Gus can hit the three. I agree. Yeah, I, that's a pick. I, 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 I hate to beat the drum, and maybe I'm wrong on it. I, I just think people are selling Gus Yaldin short. I really do. I, I don't think he's – people say, oh, he's a freshman. Well, he's a freshman that's been playing at some of the highest levels of competition in high school basketball, and he's physically developed, and he has a high IQ. And we're talking an era of college basketball where freshmen play all the time. We just saw Connor Siegen play 30 minutes a game darn near. Like, it's it's not – as crazy as it used to be like freshmen. I mean, you go back to the sixties, freshmen used to not be able to play basketball, right? You had to sit out of here. It's not that crazy anymore. And he's a 6'10", 240 pound dude who can shoot and has great basketball IQ plays hard. Uh, I tell he's going to play and he's going to be just fine. I, I don't, I guess I don't understand the angst about putting a freshman out there. We still need another big, I don't think Gus is going to be ready or he's not big enough. Here's the other thing. A lot of the seven footers, like the taller athletic post players, are toothpicks. Gusty Alden's gonna move those dudes around. He's gonna be just fine. I- I'm telling y'all, he's gonna be just fine. So let's go here. Uh Rick Tange says, think Hodges and Ilver will finally progress enough to contribute. If not, I wonder if they will hit the portal too. Mm, I don't think so. I I don't think so. I really don't. And I hate to be that guy, but if you looked at this year at how how much difficulty we had in the front court with depth, Rick. And then you realize that neither of those players could get any run. I don't know, man. It it doesn't bode well. And it doesn't mean they're 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 busted as college players. It, it I think it means Gray Guard, for whatever reason, he can't buy into them. Um, whether it's a recruiting miss or whether they're just in the wrong system. I hope they do. Like I'm a guy who eternally cheers for people like i like it when people do well i like it when people succeed i just don't see it i, I that doesn't mean i think they'll they'll transfer i mean if, if you have i i don't know what options they would even have right that's the other thing if you haven't been able to get on the court you you may not love your transfer portal options and staying in madison to get an amazing degree and be in an amazing environment and hoping to develop might be the most appealing option to you you know it, it's comfortable and great teammates potentially you have friends and I don't know. I, I just don't see it. I hope they do, because um, those would, that would be wins and that would help the depth. But yeah, I don't think so. P says Gus will be a legend. I agree. <laughs> I, he's going to be Brad Davidson to me. He, he's going to be a post version of, of Brad Davidson. The rest of the Big Ten is going to hate him. Wisconsin fans are going to love him, and he's going to lead to a lot of winning basketball, in my opinion. Oh, regardless of the roster around him, he's a winning piece in the Big Ten, and I'm excited to see how that goes. Bo Dragon says, I'd let Klesman be the green light shooter. Oh, I wish he would shoot more. I agree, Bo. I, it, some of that's on him, by the way. And I think he got more aggressive as the season went on. But there's several times throughout the year where the ball swings, it skips, it gets to Hepper, and Hepper makes the one more pass. Klesman gets it, and Klesman hesitates. He doesn't shoot. He's a good shooter. He needs to be more aggressive. 
So I think hopefully with a, a year of experience in Madison, a year being that guy, and now coming off the bench, he might be kind of the flamethrower off the bench. I don't know if he can be that, but I hope he shoots a little bit more. Jerry Johnson says, Mike Wilkinson, undersized center. Agreed. I mean, you don't have to be – every position has a prototype, right? Uh, point guard, 6'3", hyper-athletic uh, with a good shot. Can go either side, great IQ, really good vision. Um, two guards, 6'6", six, six, with a 40-inch vertical and deep three-pointer range. Like, every position has a prototype, and the prototype at center is like 7'1", rim running, uh, athletic, great hands, post ability. But you don't have to be the prototype to be successful. You know what I mean? Like, you can be – because you have other things, you can be successful. And Gus, not to turn this entire show, it was a Noah Reynolds show, and it's turning into a Gus bus tour de force. But uh, Gus has a lot of those other things that you either can't teach or or that make him unique to the position. So, again, I don't think he's going to be like a superstar next year, but he's going to play and he's going to be just fine. And people are going to be surprised and they're going to say, oh, I can't believe he's doing that as a freshman. He is a developed freshman who's been playing at one of the highest levels of high school basketball. And he's competed against a ton of really big time talent in camp circuits and has gotten the best of them. So yeah, there's a reason this was a big recruiting win. Um, You know, come back at me if I'm wrong. I don't think I will be. I think he's going to be just fine and he's going to be a big part of our depth. All right, we're going to wrap it there. Again, this was a Noah Reynolds show. Noah Reynolds re-enters the portal. Um, Once a badger, always a badger question mark i don't know uh it was it's unfortunate though i don't want to be that guy that says oh, i don't care anymore we don't need him no i thought he was a nice piece i thought he was a nice depth piece i i congratulated guard when he got him i thought he was going to be a playmaker off the bench and he's just he's gone so it is what it is you still have a scholarship to play with now go get a in my opinion go get a backup four or five to increase your depth in the front court but uh from there Let's just, let's just wrap it up. Say on Wisconsin, the launch is coming up. We're going to be in Madison. I'm flying tomorrow. Hope everyone is, that can make it is able to make it. If you're traveling, have incredibly safe travels for sure on Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, let's keep it going. Jason Pelek says, Pelek? Uh, forgive me, my friend, if I mispronounce your last name. Thank you for the perspective, Ryan. I needed that tonight. Yeah, man. Thank you for jumping in, Jason, for sure. Absolutely. This is all about all of us jumping in together, getting more perspective. I get perspective from y'all. So I appreciate it. Rick says, good discussion. Agree that Gus will be big time. Uh, Noda Wales says, on Wisconsin. And TJZK says, launch in two days. Let's go. That's a great place to end it. On Wisconsin. Appreciate y'all. We'll talk later.